chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again If a line segment joining two points subtends equal angles at two other points lying on the same side of the line containing the line segment, the four points lie on a circle. This is a theorem. For this, I will first of all draw a diagram so that I will explain what this theorem exactly says. Suppose this is a circle and this is a line segment or a chord AB. Let us start with this situation. If a line segment joining two points, so this line segment AB subtends equal angles at two other points lying on the same side of the line containing the line segment. Now what is the line that contains this line segment? This we can draw this as the dotted line. Okay. So read it again. If a line segment joining two points A and B subtends equal angles at two other points lying on the same side of the line containing the line segment. That is, we have two points. One is this point, let us say P. We have drawn a circle in such a way so that it passes through P. And let us see, say that this is the angle subtended by this line segment AB at this point P. Let this angle be marked as any angle alpha. Now come back to read it again. If a line segment joining two points subtends equal angles at two other points, one of the points has already been taken as P. Let the second point be Q, which is not necessarily lying on the circle because he says any two points joining two points on the same side of the line, the only condition is that P and Q, they are lying on the same side of this line and they have not been given to lie on the circle. So we will take it as some dot lying outside the circle. To just clarify the things properly and to just prove it correctly, let us also draw simultaneously and this is the point P, this is AB, this is the common line that contains this line segment AB and I am just completing the same diagram. This is point P and instead of Q lying outside the circle, let us assume that Q is lying inside the circle because these are the two possibilities. One is that Q lies outside the circle. The other is that it lies inside the circle. And the third one is that it lies on the circle. So I am taking both the cases simultaneously. Let us now reread the statement. If a line segment joining two points subtends equal angles at two other points lying on the same side of the line. So P and Q are any two points which lie on the same side of this line L. P and Q are any two points that lie on the same side of this line L. Now it is given that the angle subtended at Q, this angle, let us call it beta, alpha and beta have been given equal, equal angles. If the, sub, if the angle subtended at P, P and Q, they are equal, they have been given equal, then we have to prove that the four points P, Q, B and A, they lie on this common circle. Likewise, we can join Q to A and B and let this be the angle beta and let this be the angle alpha for our second case. We have to prove that if alpha and beta are equal, then P, Q, A and B, they will lie on the same circle. In this case also, if alpha and beta are equal, then P, Q, B and A will have to lie on the same circle. 
So let us assume that P, Q, B and A, they do not lie on the same circle. I have drawn the figures accordingly. That is either Q lies outside the circle or Q lies inside the circle. So if this is the situation and alpha and beta are equal, then I will prove that this situation will lead to a contradiction. And because of that contradiction, this diagram won't be possible. Therefore, Q cannot lie outside. And likewise, in this situation also, if Q is lying inside and alpha and beta are equal, I will show that this case also leads to a contradiction. Therefore, Q cannot lie inside the circle also. So if Q cannot lie inside the circle, if Q cannot lie outside the circle, then obviously Q will have to lie on the circle. That will prove our theorem. So I hope you understand the logical reasoning that we are performing in this case. Now, let this point be marked as Q dash. I will take this diagram first and let me join Q dash to this B. So this is what I have done. Now if you observe this AB as a chord of this circle, then P and Q dash are two points lying on the same circle and AB is the chord for them. Then this angle should also be equal to alpha because we have already proved that angles in the same segment are equal. That is, if the chord subtends an angle alpha at a point P, then it will have to subtend the same angle alpha at any other point Q dash of the same circle. So this is alpha and this will also have to be alpha. Now I will show you something interesting. This is the circle, this is the triangle Q, uh, Q dash B and Q. This is one triangle and alpha is the exterior angle of this triangle. Let me draw this situation outside so that I can just help you clarify the thing what I am trying to prove. This is beta, this is alpha and let this be any angle, let me mark it as theta. Now by the exterior angle theorem, I know that alpha is equal to beta plus theta. That is exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles of the same triangle. Which implies immediately that alpha cannot be equal to beta. Alpha cannot equal beta because alpha is obtained only after adding something to beta. Therefore, the equality of alpha and beta is not possible. But even otherwise from our day to day knowledge we can see that if this is the common point then these two angles they can't obviously be equal. But since we have to reason out everything mathematically this helps us to arrive at the conclusion that alpha cannot be equal to beta. Therefore if you just look at this situation we can say that alpha cannot equal beta. If alpha cannot equal beta, but we are given that alpha is equal to beta, so we have ultimately reached a situation where we have another possibility. We have proved that alpha cannot be equal to beta. So we have a contradiction that if P and Q are two points such that alpha and beta are equal and these P and Q they are obtained from this segment AB and we say that if alpha is equal to beta then we can say that this point Q if it lies outside then alpha cannot be equal to beta. There is a contradiction at this stage as we can see. We started by saying that alpha and beta are same and yet Q lies outside the circle. But Ultimately, when we joined Q dash and B, we found that if Q lies outside the circle, then alpha and beta cannot be equal to each other because of the limitations imposed by this theorem. So this, this is not possible. Let us now come to the second situation. 
In this case, Q is lying inside the circle. So let me extend a Q to meet the circle in a point Q dash. And let me join Q dash to B as I did in that case. And as I did in that case, this angle will also have to be alpha because P and Q are lying on the same circle and they are obtained on the same chord AB. Therefore, if this is alpha, this angle will also have to be alpha. And now the situation is that beta is here and alpha is here. And we can easily see by the same, the same equation, exterior angle theorem, that alpha and beta cannot be equal in this case also. Cannot equal beta if Q lies inside the circle. So the summary is that if Q lies outside the circle, then alpha and beta can't be equal. If lies Q, if Q lies inside the circle, then alpha and beta can't be equal. Therefore, Q has to lie on the circle and in that case alpha and beta will be equal. So spoken in other form, there are three possibilities that Q, that if alpha and beta are equal, there are three possibilities that Q either lies outside the circle or inside the circle or on the circle. There is no other possibility. And we have shown that it can't lie outside. We have shown that it can't lie inside also. Therefore, the third possibility that is left has to be true. And therefore, Q has to lie on the circle, which means that P, Q, B and A, they will all lie on a common circle if the angle subtended by AB on P and Q, they are equal to each other. Such points that lie on the common circle like A, B, Q dash and P, these four points are called cyclic. And this quadrilateral, this quadrilateral formed by four cyclic points is called a cyclic quadrilateral. Let us take more theorems on cyclic quadrilaterals. Now, here is a theorem. Prove that the sum of opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral is 180 degrees. Now, this is quite an aggressive theorem, but it can be proved easily solely on the basis of reasoning, which is our main objective why we are learning the proofs of these theorems because it helps us develop good reasoning abilities side by side. Let us suppose this is a cyclic quadrilateral A, B, C and D. This is a cyclic quadrilateral because all the four vertices or the corners of this quadrilateral they are lying on the same circle. We have to prove that the sum of this angle A and C, let me write to prove angle A plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees and also angle B plus angle D is also 180 degrees for a cyclic quadrilateral. This theorem can be easily proved by joining the diagonals B and D together and the diagonal A and C together. See the steps that I will follow. Now when I join the diagonals together, now I will observe this figure from a certain angle. See this BC is a chord. BC is a chord it subtends one angle BDC on the circle. This D is one, one point on the circle. This angle BDC is one angle and let me call it alpha. Now let us look at from other side also this BC is also subtending this angle on the on another point of the same circle. This, this angle have a look at this one, this point A. So this angle will also have to be alpha because the same chord 
it creates an angle alpha with the help of point A and creates angle alpha with the help of point D. Therefore, this alpha and this alpha should meet, should be equal to each other. Let us again have a look on the same figure, this CD. Let us look from the perspective of the chord CD. Now, this, this angle beta, it stands on the chord CD, this angle beta. Likewise, on this chord CD, this angle beta also stands. This beta has to be equal to this beta. So, if you have seen this, let me now come back to this triangle BDC. So, we can write in triangle BDC, the sum of angles that is angle C plus angle alpha plus angle beta should be equal to 180 degrees. That is, this angle C plus beta plus alpha should be equal to 180 degrees, the sum of angles of a triangle being 180 degrees. Now, what is this angle alpha plus beta? Angle alpha plus beta is nothing but angle A. So, we can write angle C plus angle A should be equal to 180 degrees, which we wanted to prove. And on the same pattern, we can prove that angle B and D also should add to 180 degrees. That is, this angle and this angle should add to 180 degrees. We did not go through the constructions again. We can simply see that the sum of four angles of a quadrilateral is 360. If one pair adds to 180, then the second pair also has to add to 180 degrees. So, we can say that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral, whatever it is, they will always add to 180 degrees. So, if we can prove that the opposite angles of a quadrilateral are adding to 180 degrees, then we can be dead sure that all the four vertices will lie on a common circle. This is a very powerful result which is invariantly, invariably asked in your exams. Many questions, they are based on your knowledge of this theorem. Let us move on to our next theorem now.